How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Spawn Drop Thousand and in this video we're going to take a look at the Bermuda Azores High and forecast where it'll position itself this hurricane season which could be a major factor in determining where exactly tropical cyclones move. Could we see a stronger Bermuda Azores High this hurricane season which could steer storms closer to the United States and the Caribbean or will we see a weaker Azores High where we'll see more tropical cyclones move into the northern Atlantic. I'll try to answer those questions in this video. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of the lake cause. Make sure to like if you like this video. Make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more of the lake cause. So to first begin, let's take a look at where the Bermuda Azores High typically positions itself. It positions itself right around the central portion of the northern Atlantic. And of course, based on the name, you could probably tell that this ridge is pretty much located between Bermuda and the Azores Island, which is closer to the Eastern Atlantic, closer to Europe than it is the um, in than the continent of North America. And while it does seem like it's stationary in one area, the movement of the ridge fluctuates a lot to where sometimes the ridge could move eastward or sometimes the ridge could move further westward which would steer storms further westward as well and as you can see there are pretty much three positions of where this ridge could um, pretty much could be located at so the first position is where the ridge is all the way to the east it's closer to Europe than it is to the United States and as a result during this scenario we typically see tropical cyclones move northward much earlier and as a result pretty much stay far away from the United States and pretty much are essentially just limited to being fish storms. There might be those tropical cyclones that do bring stronger wave heights than usual along the East Coast, even if it's if it's uh, hundreds of miles away. But in general, it doesn't bring any sort of direct impacts to the United States as that would be the best case scenario for the United States, the Caribbean, as well as Central America. Because of course, the, if, if the ridge was located further eastward, then we're more likely to see less tropical cyclones impact the areas further westward. But there's a second position also where the ridge is a little bit further westward, closer to Bermuda. And we sort of see tropical cyclones move uncomfortably close to the east coast. Now, these are the type of tropical cyclones that typically impact the outer banks of North Carolina as North Carolina is one of the one of the regions that um, gets impacted by hurricanes the most in the United States. Um, it's sort of competing with Southern Florida in terms of um, that in terms of that um, record where you do receive uh, in terms of which area in the United States receives the most landfalling tropical cyclones. But uh, Outer Banks of North Carolina typically does receive a lot of uh, tropical cyclones, mainly because it pops out in right in the middle of the Atlantic, right where the Gulf Stream is. And it's in an area where the wind shear isn't necessarily strong enough to yet to steer this east. And it's in and it's in an area where it's relatively close to a Gulf Stream and sort of pops out in the open Atlantic. So as a result, we do see a lot of tropical cyclones move through North Carolina before headed eastward. And this typically happens during the second position of the ridge where it's located further eastward, where sometimes we see tropical cyclones impact North Carolina and even areas where northward if there's just enough ridging or not enough wind shear to steer the tropical cyclone further eastward very quickly. So the second position is more of a worry for the east coast. However, the third position is of course mo much more of a worry for the Caribbean I'd say as well as the Gulf of Mexico states where um, you do see that tropical cyclones move well further westward and that's where it brings a lot of the big tropical cyclones to the Gulf Coast. So it's only important to keep in mind which of these positions will be the most um, will be the most prevalent this hurricane season in determining who will receive more landfalls and who um, and where exactly tropical cyclones will go or the general direction they'll go. So if I were to show you guys the current forecast when it comes to the amount of ridging that's expected this hurricane season. So if I were to show you um, the forecast between the three month average of July, August and September, you see that there's a strong um, there's a, pretty much a strong um 
forecast that we're going to see very strong ridging throughout the northern Atlantic. So we could see a lot of storms steer further east, um, westward as Zaw and um, not may maybe not as many storms that move northward because we do see a strong ridge build right around eastern Canada that could force storms for a southward rather than steering northward. Um, however, it's also important to keep in mind that we do see a slight weakness in ridging right around the central northern Atlantic. Now, this could be good news because if we do see a little bit more of a weakness when it comes to ridging in this area, then we could see a lot of fish storms sort of take this direction and not really affect anyone. But we need to see more confidence with the CFS model over the next several months to really, um, to really make it favorable for more uh, of a strong weakness that will steer storms further northward, not impacting any land. And um, even then, despite the weakness, we still do see a decently strong amount of ridging throughout the northern Atlantic. So, in general, I still do expect more storms to head further westward that will threaten more of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico states this hurricane season. As a result of the strong amount of ridging that's forecasted throughout the United States over the three-month average. And if I were to show you guys um, for the forecast, including October, because October typically is a more um, impactful month in the hurricane season than July. You see that the ridging is still prevalent throughout the United States. So I do expect a lot of tracks to mostly move um, west northwestward, where we sort of see um, tracks that head straight towards the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe not as many tracks that move northward um, if this ridging continues in the northeast. And we could see maybe, um, and I think if storms were to move northward, it might be more likely that it moves northward early, um, earlier where we do see this weakness in ridging in the central to mid um, to middle of the Atlantic, right around where the Azores Island is. So that's definitely something to keep in mind that we're gonna see strong ridging. So as all, I do expect further westward tracks with tropical cyclones in the future. But another thing we're also gonna to need to take account for is the sea surface temperatures. And you're probably wondering how do sea, how do the sea surface temperatures affect where the Azores, um, where the Bermuda and Azores High is located, and um, and what it does, um, what how sea surface temperatures affect that location is by creating areas where there's a little bit more lift and a little bit more sinking air in the atmosphere. Because, for example, if the sea surface temperatures are a little bit warmer than average, then that area of the world would experience more of an upward motion in the atmosphere which would discourage any strong ridge from building over that region where sea surface temperatures would be warmer than average and as a result we'll see a strong a more lift in the atmosphere however in the areas where sea surface temperatures are cooler than average it would encourage more of a ridge to build and more stable air to build over that area because of course sink um cooler a uh, cooler air mass does not rise up into the atmosphere and rather sink so it'll be so anywhere where the sea strip temperatures might be cooler than average or at least cooler than the other areas experiencing more lift in the atmosphere than usual then we then there's more likely of a shot we'll see the bermuda ridge sort of get manipulated by the sea surf temperatures a little bit and based on the sea surf temperatures how it's looking like right now of course like i showed you guys in my previous video the western atlantic has been a point of interest when it comes to sea surf temperatures because you see that the sea surface temperatures are still much warmer than average throughout the western Atlantic. Now, this could be big because if this continues, then the ridge might not necessarily go as far east as it would want to because there's going to be a lot of lift in the atmosphere in this area. So, as a result, we might see the ridge sort of shift further eastward where the sea surface temperatures are a little bit cooler than average or closer to average where the sinking air is would be more suitable in that area so um, um we need to see if this continues you see that the main development region is experiencing sea surface temperatures cooler than average however I do expect the sea surface temperatures to rise above average in the main development region once we head closer to the hurricane season however I'm not sure if it'll, it'll necessarily be enough to really outweigh the 
um, how much above average the Western Atlantic is. So even if it does, so even if it does, um, the sea serpentors do rise well above average in the main development region might not outweigh how much above average it is in the Western Atlantic. So we still could see the ridge shift further eastward than expected and as a result we could see more storms that still head further westward but maybe take a more northward track so it's going to be a little bit difficult to forecast but i do think that overall generally speaking we will see primarily more westward tracks as a result of what the computer models are stating and worse um with a stronger ridge building um and despite the fact that we're going to see warmer than average sea temperatures here i'm not sure if it's going to be enough of an effect to uh, um pr pretty much change what the cfs model is currently forecasting so that's only something um to keep in mind when it comes to this hurricane season now um in terms of where i expect um hurricanes to track this hurricane season as a result of the position of this bermuda azores high i do expect the high to be a little bit further eastward um I, I mean westward to where we will see tracks move sort of in this direction in the red is where i expect the most tropical cyclones to move through this includes the northern gulf of mexico this includes a lot of the caribbean um, and in the orange it's a little bit less likely and in the yellow it's even more less likely where i expect tropical cyclones to move through um, but i still do think there's a pretty good chance depending on how warm the sea surface temperatures are in this region we could see the ridge move a little bit further eastward at times and that could allow for tropical cyclones to move further northward but in general i do expect tropical cyclones to move further westward this hurricane season which could encourage more landfalls overall in the united states so that's only something to keep in mind but i still again do expect a decent amount of tropical cyclones uh, move um to be fish storms as a result of the weakness and ridging i mentioned but i overall i do expect more of an emphasis on tropical cyclones further westward rather than eastward so make sure to keep that in mind this hurricane season but anyways guys i think guys for watching uh make sure to subscribe make sure to like um if you like this video and i hope you guys all have a great day